I wish and pray God that whatever learning that you accrue from the session today is going to be useful for thousands of students. I see a number of academicians who have joined the session today. Let it be useful for thousands of students through you and let it create a change in your future and also to the community through you. So with this, I start. I hope you're all able to see my screen. Uh, my gratitude showers to uh, Majestic Technology Solutions for hosting this uh, uh, webinar. This is something which I want you to remember uh, at the start of the session and throughout the session as well. If you're not enjoying yourself, you are wasting time. So it is my duty to see that you enjoy the session today. Uh, because data science is considered to be sometimes for people who are not from uh, the same domain or people who just see it as a technical subject, it can be considered as something little dry. See, the summer is already dry. So I don't want to make the subject dry. And people coming from different profiles, I will see that there is some commonality. And I value the time that you have uh, taken away from your families and any other entertainment for having attended the session. So you are going to enjoy the session. Are you all ready for it? Yes. If yes. you're very, very ready for it, an enthusiastic type of capital S, if you're sort of ready, uh, okay, yes, then you can type a small s, okay? So anyway, you're going to enjoy the session today. Um, being an international seminar, I also welcome a couple of our international participants uh, from US, uh, Mr. Amos Balaji and uh, uh, Bachin A. Ajay Kumar from Singapore who have uh, joined the session. Uh, I, it is my pride and privilege to be presenting in front of academicians. I value my professors, teachers, and I always stay connected with them. So with all due respect, I would like to get into the session and I call myself a learning partner. Uh, part of the session you're going to learn from me and through association from you, through your question and answers and post the session, I would love to learn a lot from you. So a quick introduction about me. Uh, during my school and college days, I was a very talkative student. I have a lot of friends. I retain uh, the friendship and cherish them. Uh, Professor Magesh, who hosts the session, is my school friend. I was not very good in sports in school, okay? Um, the best thing that I remember as a memory of sports is uh, I got a participation certificate in March past in third standard. That is all. I'm not a sports person. I'm just a sportive person. And then I have been mischievous. So you will see some uh, jokes and comedy during the session. So that is how I am. So I would like to keep uh, people engaged and happy. So, and from uh, a perspective of experience, I carry about 22 years of experience and uh, have worked for eight companies. I've worked for 12 bosses. And, uh, you know, I, for this presentation, out of a lot of love for you, I have done a preparation, about 32 hours of preparation into this presentation to make it very useful and comprehensive for you. And these are some of my certifications. I'm certified in robotics process automation. I'm a certified data scientist, uh, PMP, ITA, LB3 and everything. And I keep myself up, uh, updated with uh, the industry developments by being part of ISTD and IQR, QCFI, uh, International Robotics Process Automation Institute and all these memberships. As I said, it is just a beginning of relationship. So you are welcome to connect with me. You are welcome to hear me speak more uh, through the YouTube channel, Author Venkat. And after the session, I would request each of you to drop a note on how you found the session on Google Business Author Venkat. If you search Author Venkat on Google, you will find uh, you know on the right side, uh, the business listing. You can post your feedback and also post the feedback on um, the form that will be sent by Megastrick Technologies. Uh, I would request you to uh, either do, do this today or take a screenshot and do this, um, uh, you know, sometime as soon as possible. Uh, Analytics Vidya is a mobile app where you will get lots of interesting information on digital transformation. So please download Analytics Vidya and as you read these articles, it doesn't matter what is your level of awareness today. 
when i started getting into share trading and bought economic times first time i didn't understand much of it but as you read more and more you will get familiar with it your interest will grow so i would solidly recommend that as a continuation of the session you take some time to download analytics with the app on your mobile and there is an institute called institute of robotic process automation and artificial intelligence the membership is completely free you will see leaders thought leaders from the industry uh, talking about varied topics related to uh, automation digital transformation it is going to add a wealth of knowledge to you so subscribe to irpa ai after the session as well take a screenshot and uh, worth reading uh, i would suggest a article which i had recently written on five things no one will tell you about automation this article will give you clarity on how you can leverage automation for your business career down the line it is a very simple article short article but it will give you some very good wisdom nuggets on using uh, you know some of the things that you will learn from the session further for your career enhancement and for the careers of your students from how we are going to address the session those who know what to do stay where they are those who know why to do it move ahead you would see this in organizations you would see this you know uh, in visionary ceos the trait that they know why to do something they know how to get something accomplished on the priorities but somebody who knows what to do like a you know a programmer or a tester or a project manager they will almost remain where they are so from the perspective of this session you are going to more learn on why to do because as senior people as academicians who have come with lots of accomplishments it is not uh, worthwhile learning something at a nuts and bolts level during the session so you are going to learn something at a much higher order and considering the variety of profiles that i came across there is somebody from biotechnology there is somebody from uh, english someone who has got a max major a librarian there are a lot of you know varied profiles that i have seen so it is difficult to fit something too technical uh, into your expectations uh, because i really want everybody to enjoy the session and connect with the session so more of the session will be focusing at a 30000 feet level 80% of the session will be focusing at you know a uh, higher level so that you can see the big picture and appreciate things what happens within an organization what you can do for uh, you know leveraging this digital transformation wave so that is where 80% of the session is going to be 20% of the session is we will get into much into some failures of certain projects and all these things is that okay with you okay so that is that is how we are going to structure the session today and and that is when i will be able to uh, you know drive the point across from people from different profiles so uh, today your learning package is this we are going to learn something on what transformation is what digital transformation is uh, there is something from the world economic forum which can help you to align your research focus or maybe your interest towards one or the other directions so that you can cash in on some of the trends that are happening in the industry today and something about underlying skills in industry 4.0 uh, because not you no know, uh, da data scientists or machine learning specialists these are not the only guys who are going to thrive today you can have a wonderful career so what are the indispensable skills for industry 4.0 regardless of the technology is something that we are going to learn and there is always new ways of doing things something on automation pain points that you know you can be more aware of when you guide your students or when you uh, when someone asks you uh, about taking it as a career and something about how organizations start pursuing a digital transformation initiative so that is where the digital maturity assessment and uh, we are also going to see very very interesting case studies uh during the course of the session and something about how you can accelerate your research and innovation using the digital transformation so that is going to be the structure so i would say this um, session is like this okay it will focus both on the digital transformation in the industry and number 2 on how you can leverage it for your benefit both these aspects okay and more at a higher level as i said so um a session like this does not happen every day every hour and every minute um but i can tell you 
from a digital transformation standpoint, what happens every day? 500 million tweets get across to the world every day. Over 500 hours of videos are uploaded in YouTube every hour. 29 million WhatsApp messages are shared every minute. So uh, this session that you're going to see is going to add every value to your minute through digital transformation. Um, those who had seen me in the poster uh, may see that you know I'm looking very different. Okay, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, your device, your tempered glass, nothing. It has to do with this device, which I used for uh, trimming yesterday. Uh, you know, at home. So that is why I'm looking very different. So it is still the same. So I would want you to uh, you know gather more from the slides than looking at me. So I'm going to turn off uh, the video mode. And uh, so that you can completely see the slides. Okay. I hope you're able to see the complete slide view now. Um, okay. So we talked about time, what happens within the frame of time. Let us go a little bit beyond time. Think that this is not a watch, it is a time machine. Uh, some of you, uh, certainly would remember uh, 2012 when a cyclone called Sandy devastated the United States. There were 24 states which got impacted by the cyclone. Airlines were unable to fly for more than five weeks due to the cyclone Sandy. And not just in US, um, in Canada, there were about 1.5 lakh homes which went without electricity for nearly three weeks. It was much worse than the floods that we had seen in Chennai. So people suffered, uh, you know, as you can see from this, you can see a photograph of a family photograph sinking into a drainage water. Of course, not just family photographs, even families uh, lost their lives. So such events happened uh, during the cyclone, which is unimaginable um, in the US. So um, what happened as a result of the cyclone for several weeks and months is that people in many, many cities uh, in the US uh, had difficulty in accessing, uh, getting at least two square meal a day because people were displayed from homes, uh, supermarkets were not functioning. It was so difficult for people to access food. There were volunteering agencies. There is one voluntary agency called Food Bank which is the biggest one in, uh, uh, in New York City. Food Bank is a voluntary agency, like in our place you have Udavum Karangal and all that, right? So it is a volunteering agency. So this uh, an agency had a lot of volunteers who used to uh, you know, somehow uh, manage in the water and distribute food to people. But still, that was not enough. One, from a monetary side also, it was not enough. And for them to reach people faster, uh, you know, uh, resolve their hunger faster. Uh, it was not helping that much. So even six months later, uh, people were hungry. So uh, what Food Bank did was it went on to different companies and asked them uh, for donations so that they can buy food and distribute it to people. And one such company that they approached was Toyota. So uh, they asked Toyota for fund. Toyota said. Uh, well, um, instead of fun, can I do something different for you? Okay. Um, what they did is they said, we will do something different for you. Uh, the speed at which your processes are running, the efficiency with which you are able to deliver food, the amount of wastage that is being created in food because you are unable to distribute it to the needy people, we will reduce it. So, Food Bank uh, initially thought what Toyota is just an automobile company. Uh, they do some process improvement. They do some you know kind of an you know, automation in their assembly lines and all that. Uh, can they really solve this problem? And is there really worth in it? Believe me, uh, my dear professors and uh, you know all participants, um, Toyota's uh, effort in bringing in the efficiency uh, it was able to feed more than 400 families in half the time. The distribution time for the food reduced from three hours to 1.2 hours. And the amount of time people were waiting for dinner in different places, that reduced from an average of 90 minutes 
think about it. You are hungry and if you have to wait for uh, one and a half hours, isn't it difficult? So Toyota brought it to 18 minutes. So uh, Toyota did not uh, focus on charity. Toyota in turn focused on efficiency. So this session that you're going to attend today, there are free webinars, but no, you are paid something to learn efficiency and it is going to be certainly of great help to you and your decision is going to be well and very much rewarded. And what is special about this session? Uh, I've been talking greatly about the session so far. Uh, one, there are going to be stories. You saw one story uh, right now as a sample. And this stories is going to help you uh, for retaining your knowledge. And it is going to be useful for making your classroom sessions very interesting for your students. Uh, okay. And uh, you're going to learn frameworks, which means that, see, a lot of things can be learned technically. But how does an organization go about implementing digital transformation methodically? So that is something which is possible through frameworks. You're going to learn that. You remember, uh, we talked about 30,000 feet level and uh, people who know why to do. So you're going to learn that important part here. And uh, indispensable skills. Uh, this is important for you to make both your students. If many of your students get placed in uh, MNCs, it is a pride to you, uh, right? And for getting your teams industry ready so that they can instantly connect with the leaders. So what are those indispensable skills which will help both your students and you if you are planning for a career change, we are going to see that. It is an underlying skill. It is not something you can Google and find it out. I learned it from implementing many projects over the last four years with a lot of variety and learnings. So that is what you're going to see as indispensable skills. And uh, as I said, I want to strike a common ground uh, with each of you because you come from varied disciplines. Uh, so the session will be slightly, uh, you know, uh, less diluted from a technical standpoint and more from a conceptual standpoint. And it is going to be interactive. I would like to see more and more questions on the chat box. Um, because why interactive? Because everything is automated in the world, but you and I, we are not yet automated. Okay. So secondly, uh, whatever takeaways from the session, I encourage that please take screenshots. Okay, uh, even though this material is copyrighted as a claim, it is okay, please take screenshots, uh, retain, revise, because what you know is not important. What you do with what you know is what makes a difference. There are a lot of business people who, who just follow just two simple policies. They will be making a lot of money just with those two simple policies. So what you do with what you know is very important. So go through the session slides later as well, and you are welcome to reach uh, Majestic or me down the line if you have uh, some kind of uh, questions as well, which which could not be addressed during the course of the session. Okay. So, um, what to expect? Uh, when you when someone who is novice to digital transformation is to look at the number of names of applications, platforms, and services. They can think that, oh, they, these are very too much for handle, handling, right? So they may think that you know, things are very, very complicated. And it is, uh, and uh, you know, if the age is not on their side, uh, people could also incorrectly assume that, will I be able to make a move now uh, and all that. So I would wish to say, uh, this session, I'm not going to make it complicated, okay? Making anything complicated is very simple. You can confuse your audience. I'm not going to make it complicated. Um, anything for that matter, right? If, uh, if you look at these names, need not kind of you know, bother you much. Um, as you know, you know, uh, some of you know, uh, PyTorch is just an open source machine learning library, something which helps the machine to learn by itself. And it, it is helpful for computer vision and natural language processing, anything related to ordinary text related information, uh, extracting sense from it. That is what PyTorch is. Okay. So the nine that you see here as a big data analytics tool, this also integrates machine learning with some data mining. That is all. So nothing great about it. Uh, okay. And when you see designations like data scientists, when you see um, articles saying that data scientists is going to be one of the highest paid job in the industry, I would also want to clarify this. Data scientist is not one role. Okay, people just call it commonly data scientists. That's all. If you go to a village in Tamil Nadu, anybody 
you know uh, let them come from europe or uh, you know america people will just say you know he has come from foreign they would not even know what it is right so data scientist is just a global term that is being used for multiple roles roles like the machine learning engineer or a data architect or business intelligence analyst uh, and all that oh, uh, again what i would wish to reiterate is uh, forget all this okay uh, you need not specialize in everything here as long as you are strong in your domain there is no reason for you to get confused or to question yourself on whether you will be able to leverage things from um, digital transformation so the tools may be little different from each other okay um, there is uh, automation anywhere there is blue prism so automation anywhere and the blue prism they have got slightly different concepts uh, right uh, ui path is more similar to work fusion that is all uh, right so you can uh, you know whether you make a career out of it is not your choice but what i would uh, say is it is not as complicated as somebody outside would see it because why i am saying that you have a reason here um you may have seen this uh, uh, in the circus not everybody the young people you may not have seen this in the circus but uh, many others in their late 30s early 40s would have seen this right uh, a lion tamer how does the lion tamer tame the lion how does the lion obey him any any idea one way is uh, maybe over feeding the lion so that it's not hungry it doesn't come and try to you know grab hold of him but what is what is his technique to uh, you know kind of you know uh, overpower the lion the technique he uses is this okay um what you see his uh, in a stand is a stool um he shows the stool in front of the lion the lion sees uh, you know one leg of the stool and then it tries to you know kind of you know attack that leg when it is trying to attack the leg uh, the guy he rotates the stool a little bit and then you know the lion will get confused and see you know uh, that leg i was trying to attack uh, let me see this leg and then he will rotate the stool again so uh, the lion despite it being very very strong it gets confused when it is shown too many things so don't get confused by seeing too many things in data analytics rpa software you would see it in job description even companies which are asking for somebody to know work fusion plus ui path plus blue prism they really don't want that instead of saying or they just put a comma it doesn't mean you have to be great in everything if you are great in your domain you are valued and you will be able to get the best out of digital transformation whether you are an english professor or you know biotechnology or any stream it does not matter there is scope for every stream so don't worry about the complexity for now okay because i'll also tell you one thing right um accenture's current ceo she until 40 years old the ceo of a technology company was working in a law firm so it doesn't matter your stream of specialization can be different but have you cultivated a skill related to a core skill which can be translated to another domain it is only that matters so with this understanding let us uh, get into something little bit shocking for you um, a harvard study indicated that only 8% of the leaders in the organization are effective in uh, both strategy and execution so uh, how many of you uh, think that you are very good in uh, strategizing a symposium event and executing it wonderfully if uh you know if i uh, know i believe that most of you are like that so when that is the case you can be effective as a leader driving automation initiatives driving digital transformation initiatives in the organization uh, okay so that is possible and look at this shocking fact number 2 fortune 500 companies every company would want to get uh, into the privileged slot right uh, they would want to say we are part of fortune 50 fortune 500 and all that but the average age of a fortune 500 company is just 14 years so what does this mean there is a need for companies to adapt themselves so if the companies are not adapting to themselves then uh, they run out of business that is all they uh, run out of business it's not talking about uh, you know 
lifespan of a company being inside a fortune finder list it is lifespan of an organization itself the organization will shut down shutters if it does not concentrate on transforming so transformation is necessity and we are going to talk about the digital transformation so these are uh, uh, some of the top 12 streams of digital transformation which is uh, you know waiting for you to shift your role and career and life for the better if it is if you are only going to be at a user level maybe your life just slightly shifts for the better but if you are at a you know uh, if you are seriously pursuing for uh, propelling your career then it could help you for your career so these are the top 12 streams uh, artificial intelligence big data and all that some of you may be wondering uh, why machine learning is not part of it yes did you have that question machine learning is part of it if you don't find it in the 12 it is still part of it machine learning is just a subset of artificial intelligence just like when you say i want to buy a tv it means tv with the remote right it is like that artificial intelligence with the machine learning is what will help in improving the level of intelligence so that is why uh, you know artificial intelligence is uh, here and uh, you know uh, i would say um, you know because i could see some uh, you know uh, english professors also in this so do not think that you know because of you are not being techno savvy uh, you may not have a role to play in these 12 you certainly have a role to play in this um natural language processing is one area where solid skills in part of speech uh, word relationship uh, morphemes and uh, something related to uh, connecting the context uh, see all these are very important uh, for natural language processing when i say book a ticket or buy the book for the of your team the word book has got two different meanings in both these sentences right so this context related uh, you know training for the nlp engines so this is where people who are strong in their language can help and there are you know uh, i could see a lawyer also in this uh, uh, session participant so i would wish to say yes uh, even for legal professionals artificial intelligence uh, holds something for you uh, there are applications on the legal domain like um, whenever the court passes judgment uh, which are you know many in number it is generally typed and digitized by different organizations they are annotated uh, the summary is drawn from it synopsis head notes writing so for all this uh, the text summarization and classification for the head notes writing uh, all this holds a huge potential because a system will do something but a lawyer who has the domain knowledge will be only able to say whether the system synopsis writing is contextually correct or the system has misunderstood something so your domain knowledge matters a lot mission cannot do independently something without a domain knowledge so feel happy that you are going to be contributing to this wave and you are going to be also benefited from this wave okay so let me also tell you uh, know because i saw some five english teachers so that's why i'm getting into this before we get more into the technology okay if i say um, majestic technologies is a unique uh, private company that offers certification for data science right so um, is the word certification is it related to majestic technologies yes is the word certification related to unique no because the sentence has got a word unique so the uh, relationship dependency also matters and i could see botany professors uh, also here uh i would encourage that uh, please go and type in google iris i r i s iris uh, data set you will see you know different determinants for determining the uh, type of flower so uh, botany for uh, image recognition image classification uh, you know which is a wide arena uh, knowledge of uh, you know your domain matters a lot so these things you can just get into one of them nobody needs to master every you know each of the 12 i also don't know every you know each of this i, I know uh, you know uh, a good level of exposure 
the artificial intelligence and some algorithms not every single algorithm in the world not at all possible and from an application perspective uh, you know i have more into uh, automation and into artificial intelligence part for specific industry domains only not every domain i have some experience with legal i have some experience with healthcare and account payables so uh, it doesn't matter so you can specialize in uh, something uh, here and if uh, if you are to uh, yeah i will maybe i'll just reserve that comment later because we are talking too much on this slide itself okay and uh, this curve may be familiar i'm sorry uh, this curve may be familiar to uh, most of you this is called the technology adoption curve uh, to be precise it is uh, more popularly known as the rogers adoption curve okay uh, this says that for any innovation for any innovation for that matter there will be only you know 13.5 people a percentage of people uh who will be adopting that innovation faster say people who learn data science uh, will be you know maybe you know only 13.5% till the last year maybe as years go more and more people will be doing it as years go more and more companies will be getting into digital transformation now you know most of them are in the early adopters and early majority that is where it features okay so this applies for any technological uh, adoption see my mother was you know very quick in getting a touch screen phone so she belonged to an early adopter my dad was almost a laggard he was uh, he got a touch screen phone only a few months ago so there will be always people who will adopt a technology later not just people even companies will adopt certain technologies late and this is uh, something which you can keep in mind because sometimes when you produce a research paper right um, the time may not be great Uh, right edison's first invention was uh, you know an electrical voting machine nobody accepted at that point of time it took lot of time for them to accept so do not lose heart if something that you are developing is not getting accepted because the natural process is this google pay um i am very sure that uh, at least 40 to 50% of the participants for the session have paid through google pay yes so um tell me something you can type in your chat box uh, and i may have little difficulty in viewing the chat box uh, right so uh, type in your chat box what do you think is the time by which google pay was introduced when was it introduced which year which month 2015 maybe 2015 oh thank you so much and uh, your name please Yeah, Shahid, Shahid here. Hi, Shahid. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. So it was introduced in January 2018. Uh, okay, it was introduced in January 2018. So if someone uh, had uh, you know used Google Pay, uh, let me tell you. If we we don't, uh, I would wish to conduct this session in an interactive manner, but uh, due to uh, you know uh, 77 participants, it may be a little difficult for me. So. um if uh, if we are to just look at how many of these people use google pay and when then we would obviously see that you know uh, maybe uh, you know only about 14% of the people used it in um, 2018 the year in which it was introduced uh, maybe about 50% you know this 34% of the people furthermore they started using google pay in the first half of 2019 some others used you know in the second half somebody maybe still uh, you know not very comfortable using it and they may be using it later this year so this is this you know technology adoption curve will fit in anywhere even whether you are a user or an inventor or a researcher or anything okay so that's the thing please keep this in mind because this is an important thing in digital transformation as i said these are important concepts which um, you know which is applicable from a 30000 feet level and uh, you know um, can i say something interesting i showed you a uh, you know trimmer first right the gillette when uh, he had invented uh, a shaving blade for the first time uh, you know before that people were using knives and they were doing shaving in a very raw manner some people were afraid of doing the shave so in uh, you know that you know in 1800s 
and late 1880s 90s and all that people were having a cut on their you know uh, chin right and they used to look like old uh, black and white movie villains with scar on their cheek uh, gillet when he invented uh, a blade which is so thin so fine so that you will never have that cut uh, in the first year what do you think will be the number of blades sold across the world any guesses it was minimal i think very very minimal very good sir very good very good very good i would encourage participants you can absolutely you know you're welcome as long as you unmute yourself and mute back uh, you're most welcome to be participating i will feel very happy if you are participating wonderful so the minimal figure is 168 blades sold in the first year across the world today you cannot imagine right so always this is the case so uh, remember this solidly with anything okay so now um, moving on to the research focus uh, for all the researchers here uh, i would say um, it is it is it is very important um, to know because there are a lot of material in google on digital transformation lots of courses uh, without even knowing whether this is going to be useful for this target audience or not they conduct courses they don't even bother whether this is going to be applied by the person uh, and all that but uh, let me tell you it is very important to know what is going around the world by a group of uh, researchers from entrepreneurs and uh, uh, you know bodies across the world this is a prediction by 2025 i'm only looking at uh, you know the number of uh, you know changes that are going to happen which has got a more than 50% adoption rate okay i'm not talking about everything under the world there are so many things happening in the digital transformation arena okay so look at this uh, first thing 10% of the people wearing clothes connected to the internet 91% is uh, the uh, estimate that this is going to happen which means that there are companies already developing it there is research which is happening in a full fledged manner towards getting there uh, right so this is something interesting right so uh, by 2025 you will have uh, also shirts which are available with uh, maybe an rfid tag or a chip uh, wherein uh, you know the retailer will be able to know uh, you know how many times you have worn this shirt okay uh, do you really dry it uh, in a, you know as recommended did you use a strong detergent and that is why you know you are uh, uh, saying that you no know, this shirt is not good the fabric is not good and you are trying to return so and uh, you know how many times you use this shirt before you dispose it so many things are possible with this so um, when you are doing research is it possible if this is of your interest is it possible for you to do something related to this and gain a patent then it will be you know you will be economically well rewarded okay look at some other possibilities like this okay you will find uh, yeah uh, something related to uh, you know 3d printing right um, you know uh, 3d printing so um, what is what is uh, what is there in that uh, right so it is going to alter the retail industry thoroughly if you are going to a hotel today uh, you will carry three luggages uh, for your vacation uh, right possible if you are staying there for three four days with your family but uh, if uh, you uh, you know maybe uh, you know uh, or not maybe there is all a very very high chance uh, for these technological developments to fructify by 2025 that you get into a hotel you need not carry any dress uh, nothing is required uh, right and you can uh, just like how you take a color print out you can download a 3d design and print your uh, shirt at the hotel's reception yourself so this is going to be you know uh, something which is going to alter uh, you know and revolutionize uh, 3d printing and the retail industry so similarly you would see uh, something related to um, you know reading glasses uh, uh, people being able to uh, you know embedded mobile uh, you know into the bodies of the people so all these things are already you know happening uh, in a full throttle so you may have uh, implantables with cyber pills so that you know when something goes wrong with your body uh, thing it is not just wearables i'm saying implantables which means that you swallow the cyber pill and a message will go to your doctor 
if there is something wrong with your uh, you know body condition so there is a lot of developments which are going to happen if you can align your research focus on these areas by looking at what world economic forum says is going to be uh, you know coming up as a wave and a market then you will get the best out of it okay uh, you can see you can do your research as you want but if there is say for example if you want to go to trichy uh, right there could be a passenger train uh, and there could be a shatabdi train if you want to go faster you can board the shatabdi so similarly if you want to go faster and make uh, you know faster reach your destination of leveraging uh, the digital transformation then you can uh, look at any of these uh, things which world economic forum suggests and align your research focus there is a high possibility if you can get a patent here or do some you know invention here or something on which the industry depends on you know your research then you could be in board of directors for one of the startups you could get great shares and lead a happy life so everything is possible so this is just a glimpse that i wanted to share again from a 30000 feet level okay so transformation is a term um, which is not so commonly uh, understood in the same manner by everybody so transformation is not equal to change transformation means nothing of the original remains only then it is called transformation for example if um, magesh shankar had seen me as a person who gets uh, very angry every time somebody who gets easily upset easily irritated if that is how he see me and after a few months he sees that i am so calm uh, even if when somebody intentionally mocks at me i am still you know smiling uh, then it is called transformation nothing of the original remains that is transformation so a real time example that i could say of transformation is this uh, larva to butterfly uh, okay so i i would just want to also associate it with transformation uh, connecting what happens in the company okay um the level of if you look at this and look at this the level of mobility does it vary it varies right uh, how far this can move and this in this form it can move does it vary it varies how fast it can move it varies right how many regions it can go and cover it varies so similarly a digitally transformed company how far they can go uh, from their survival how fast they can influence the customers how many regions it can conquer and uh, you know uh, it defining what it consumes because a butterfly consumes something different this consumes something different right so this is uh you know because the consumer habits are also going to be different right because butterfly generates something for the consumer i don't think larva uh, generates something uh, you know at a equivalent scale for the consumer right you don't expect honey to come from uh, larva in any way right so uh transformation means uh this i see somebody is uh, annotating the slide one minute let me just try to uh, stop annotating or bagesh will you be able to kind of yes yes mangal i will okay thank you somebody is demonstrating that the digital transformation should go in upward direction okay <laughs> that's what i understand from this okay i appreciate your notes on the slide uh, okay uh, so uh, so let me tell you something the people who do it faster are smarter um, there is a there was a, a company in the us uh, which was uh, telecom they sold yellow pages for um, 2.4 billion us dollars to a company called ccmp capital 2.4 billion dollars sometime uh, in the year of you know 2007 2008 but the company who purchased it for 2.4 billion dollars they did not know people will stop using yellow pages few years down the line but the company which sold it they knew that this is going to happen they wanted to move away from that kind of a business and transform themselves and if you think transformation just only uh, you know helps at the individual level helps only at uh, uh, you know at an organization level there is something much more to it i will also show that in uh, an upcoming slide okay so here is something more on transformation uh, you are welcome to take a screenshot as i said um, any transformation 
without a proper process is chaos it could happen people could you know everybody in every department will be working on something related to automation and it may not majorly contribute to the organization also so um can you hear me yeah yeah we can hear you okay wonderful thank you thank you so much for the immediate acknowledgement um so um so uh, you know there are there are uh, you know there are many things which have made certain things very structured and easy for anybody to do see if anyone wants to solve a very difficult problem as a team six thinking hats was devised so that anybody can you know uh, crack and find a great solution if you have you know different solutions and if you want to think differently from it then scamper is a tool anybody can use for uh, you know deriving out of the box solutions if you want to make some improvement then six sigma demic structure made it possible for anybody to okay so like this in digital transformation also things are happening so, so that companies don't scramble and don't go wrong in their process of doing digital transformation we are also maybe uh, some 15 slides down the line we are also going to see how digital transformation can be carried out in an organization in a structured manner i also uh, wish that you know this be remembered digital transformation means business transformation it means business transformation only then it is a digital transformation just you know installing an iot device in a toilet in a company and then calling we have digitally transformed that doesn't make sense a digital transformation means business transformation uh, you know for the organization like uh, popularly known quality frameworks these are business excellence frameworks right so digital transformation is org transformation and nothing else and uh, we talked about the process uh, here right so knowledge on the process always pays uh, i've been uh, you know even in couple of earlier slides i told you that your domain knowledge that you have is a treasure right? if we know the knowledge on the process then we can make money out of it okay so if look at this advertisement um, colgate uh, 88 rupees if it is 88 rupees and colgate is a one and only toothpaste in the world will you buy it you will right and um, if colgate is uh, has changed its rate to 888 rupees will you still buy it you will be thinking rationally that why it is not oh you may be thinking, okay. be because you are in a webinar you are not directly sitting close to me you are thinking whether you can come without brushing the teeth isn't <laughs> i'll start my own thinking. company to produce pastes wonderful wonderful excellent answer uh, who is that please svetlana svetlana hi svetlana thank you so much so um, yeah so when you know the process when you know the process then you are not defined by the market conditions correct if you know how to make uh, ginger garlic paste then 45 is not the cost that you have to pay for it correct if you know the process then it pays for itself otherwise you are dependent you just become you know uh, you your things go out of your control if you do not know the process look at these things okay um when i went to one of the workshop for breathing there was a 64 year old person sitting next to me so we have been breathing right from the childhood somebody at 64 years is trying to learn how to breathe properly okay writing we have been learning from pre kg there is an expert who is conducting writing related workshops so knowledge on process always pays your domain expertise that you have is your strength learn something more about how the digital transformation as a process works and that is something which you are also going to see during this enjoyable session today uh okay so we have been talking about companies um i mean also talking about uh, individuals on transformation there is something uh, beyond that okay um Barcelona Olympics. Uh, I am sure many of you remember it. Okay, so if you were in school days when you were um, when Barcelona Olympics happened, you can type a S in the chat box. If you were in your college days when Barcelona Olympics happened, you can type uh, C in the chat box. Okay, don't be so cautious. I am not going to do. in digital analytics and you know data analytics and identify your age from it um, so 
yeah very good very good thank you thank you thank you thank you so much so thank you thank you so much for your responses so when barcelona olympics happened uh, uh, you know there is something behind it okay um, that city uh, thought that they will become very rich extremely rich after the barcelona olympics they invested a lot of money to uh, make it happen with lot of glitz and glamour but unfortunately uh, the more money that they spent in advertisement to and you know got through tourism revenue and all that kind of thing that did not match they spent more earned less so the mayor of barcelona he decided that we are going to uh, you know make the city not lose from the memory of the world we are going to change something for the world by creating startups in this own city and create transformation across the world uh, i would in, you know request you to after the session get into you know barcelona startup companies you will see a variety of startup companies which you could not even imagine the kind of digital transformation these companies are thinking about doing today developing prototypes in so many fields will give you so much of confidence that yes with this domain knowledge i can contribute as well okay so i would request uh, please take this as one of the assignments and uh, look into uh, you know barcelona startup companies okay and there is uh, no even uh, no the level to which the adoption came is unimaginable there is a startup company called decidim in barcelona where uh, you know which what it does is it takes proposals from all the citizens in barcelona and then uh, comes up with uh, you know the agenda for the government more than 70% of the schemes that the government announces laws that are enacted uh, you know for the barcelona uh, you know city is generated from the proposals that come from ordinary citizens through the startup company called decidim Uh, okay and you would have heard that designations like chief chief technology officer digital innovation officer all these designations in some of the new age uh, software companies remember barcelona as a city itself had a lady named francesca bria who was chief technology and di chief digital innovation officer the city got transformed through digital transformation focus so that is some you know there is an interesting story behind this so which uh, i'm happy that uh, you know has taken you to a new level of exposure on digital transformation so coming to a little bit at a lower level digital transformation is not um, something which happens by just uh, transforming something in technology technology is just one of the five things which makes digital transformation it starts with the strategy and culture of the organization without a culture digital transformation cannot thrive people will be just fighting one team will be fighting with another one team will never accept what some team says so this is not possible okay and engaging the customer knowing more about the customer uh, data analytics and technology as i said is just one part of it maybe if you want to extrapolate technology into data analytics you can but uh, that is in a way a different numbers game only that is not technology so digital transformation requires all these five pieces so i would also recommend that please take a screenshot of this slide because this is one of the key takeaway you can forget anything from this session but i uh, i'll be happy if you remember what it takes to call some organization as a digitally transformed organization i will tell you why it is very important okay um um during i studied in uh, aragappa chettiar engineering college karaikudi um electrical and electronics engineering was my specialty um siemens came for the campus interview um, to our uh, uh, you know college and a uh, lot of high flying students who got distinction they went into the interview room they returned in just 3 minutes they didn't return with offer letter okay they returned with a very dejected face uh, they could not answer the first question in the interview that is all all the high performing students were coming out and uh, you know nobody got selected in siemens in that uh, you know particular visit of siemens and then uh, uh, the interesting thing is we are from electrical and electronics engineering okay 
what do you think was the question asked by Siemens uh, person who came for the interview? He didn't ask any advanced question. He just asked every top performing guy, what is electrical? What is electronic? That is all. Okay. Uh, some people said uh, electrical means uh, it will give electrical device means it will give more sound. Electronics device won't give more sound. Um, electrical device will work on plug. Electronic device will work with battery uh, cell. All this kind of you know explanations came and they rejected everybody. Every creative explanation they were all rejected uh, from the interview. Okay. Then you know we went to our HOD Nagarajan sir and then asked what is electrical sir what is electronics. Then he asked me. Hey, then he gave exploration. So when you uh, take this e-certificate from Majestic Technologies, uh, which is a premium solution provider, I would also want you to retain the knowledge on what digital transformation means. What you see in uh, you know, this amber is very important. Digital transformation, please remember this uh, definition. Digital transformation is the profound and accelerating transformation of business activities, business processes, competencies of the staff and business model to be able to leverage and change opportunities in a strategic and prioritized way. Uh, it, only if it happens in a strategic way, only if these opportunities are being leveraged in a prioritized way, only then you can call something as digital transformation, otherwise not. If somebody is just uh, developing some automation uh, in some organization without following these then it is not a digital transform company. People will use fancy words. That is all. But this is the real definition of digital transformation. Okay. And technology is only a tool for implementing innovation, for meeting the strategic goals. What matters is the goals. Um, and uh, one of the you know uh, things that uh, you know I would advise people who are working in companies and uh, you know uh, teams is that. Uh, you know, don't identify the data that is readily available in your organization and look at what value can I get from the data. No, that is a wrong way of doing things. Uh, I would say identify what is the new value that you want to create for your customers and see how data can deliver them. That is digital transformation. Looking at what data you have already will be, you will be bound, right? There is, um, I'm sure you know professors in psychology department who have joined here uh, would be uh, you know aware of a common bias of the cognitive biases called availability bias. Availability bias just means uh, taking decision based on available information alone. If I, you know if you are just given two facts and you decide only based on two facts, then you are getting into an availability bias. Uh, okay, so uh, data. Uh, you should not be looking at the current data that you have and extracting value. Look at what value you want to create and then collect your data. Look at how your data can enable that. So that is how digital transformation is to be proceeded. This again is something from a 30,000 feet level. Okay. So yeah, this slide, I think we have covered most of it in the last one. Um, digital business transformation. Digital, of course, the word digital is about technology. But digital business transformation means how do we use technology to achieve the strategic business goals? Peter Drucker is a world renowned evergreen management guru. He has said this statement, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you can be a great company. There can be wonderful, uh, you know, strategies drawn from the boardroom, but if the culture of the organization, is not conducive for implementing anything, then no strategy can survive in the organization. So for the you know, for organizations, they have only have two options. Even for individuals, they have two options only. One, invest and learn digital transformation. For the organizations, how to do digital transformation in a structured way. For people, how to, you know, how to get into a stream, upgrade rightly, so that, that way. Or pay a heavy price to it because every job is not going to remain as it is down the line. There are jobs which are going to be automated. I have not entered this in the slide, but people who are uh, interested or people who have some little bit of a fear element in you, uh, whether something will happen to my job due to digital transformation, if you have that small fear in you, or at least a curiosity to know what happened 
what will happen to this job then i would say uh, you know it is not 100% authentic but it is a very very good site will robos take my job.com that is a website you can go and enter account analyst you know or anything you know any role you know that you think what will happen down the line it will give a good uh, prediction on what kind of responsibilities of this job are going to be automated what will happen to those roles expectation in future so this will come out okay so that's a tidbit for you so will robots take my job.com so uh, from a future of the company's perspective um, the software companies which um, you know identify gap and create business models uh, to serve customers better are the companies which will thrive for the next few years uh, okay and business model is the core of any organization uh, business model as you know it will have customer segment it will have relationship it will have value proposition revenue streams where it will come from so all these things matter when you are going with digital transformation so if you think that you know um, i want something very stable uh, in digital transformation lot of things will keep changing uh, i don't know whether iot is good for me um, i mean you know data science is good for me and all that i would say uh, you can get into cyber security okay um, that is something which is very much required uh, information security is very much required for anything for that matter for uh, rpa deployment information security matters whether it is an iot uh, you know how you know uh, the data is going to be sent uh, in an encrypted manner information security matters just like every company will have almost an account accounts department right so like that digital transformation has got a kind of a enabling need for people who are good in information security so that way you can uh, you know choose this also as your career like say as long as you know cars are there there is demand uh, going to be for floor mat speaker and all that right so any technology for this matter will require this uh, security standard so this is something which uh, you know i would want to uh, share for those who want to play little safe and don't you know really want to experiment to a much larger degree with the digital transformation so um the next thing is what is the uh, most important skill for a leader somebody who is leading uh, why i'm saying this to you is uh, you know as uh, you know professors with considerable experience if you are to shift to an organization you may not be shifting as a entry level data scientist don't be thinking so you can with your experience with your research and uh, you know projects like this you can directly enter into a leadership level so as a leader when you know uh, you will be able to succeed in the digital transformation wave when you are good in boundary spanning what is boundary spanning uh, you know are you able to see the changes which happen in the environment that is boundary spanning are you able to see what your competitors are trying to do better than you uh, maybe you are trying to innovate maybe somebody is trying to do something much bigger than that so that you become dependent on him right so this is boundary spanning uh i would uh, i would say uh you know my honest admission uh, having worked with many leaders is um, not many people are good in boundary spanning they are very bound to their roles that is all they are not very good in boundary spanning uh see my i have an office in gindi okay uh, in gindi the industrial estate area you can um, take uh, maybe this is a question you can give uh, unmute yourself and give an answer uh you can give any fancy answer no problem so in gindi industrial estate uh let us take some people who have worked 5 uh, years in some company or other uh let us say they are all in a, a team leader or a managerial level you take 100 people okay uh they have worked in that area worked in some company for 5 years okay you take 100 people and ask them uh not a tough question okay you ask them what is the pin code of gindi how many what percentage of people do you think will be able to respond to you correctly i think uh, 70 to 80% should be able to uh, because uh, it's there in the id card itself 
you just have to flip and take <laughs> okay okay yeah they will refer the id card and then say so that makes it 70 to 80% is it okay good answer so boundary spanning is yes, a skill thank you thank you so much for that answer um so boundary spanning is a skill that is required for every uh, leader to you know sail through regardless of what skills they have um mahatma gandhi um, you know has said this popular quote you would have seen it in some of the xerox shops and other offices it is coming true today 2010 onwards the it is called the age of the customer which is the empowered buyers buyers have a choice uh, and they can you know they will co create products and technologies with the organization so uh, this is uh, very important for every organization or every individual who is coming out with a project to satisfy to have a very clear understanding of your customer that is what you know vola did right Uh, if a call taxi driver is in madura vial and says sir i have already reached coimbedu i'm just very very close to your house you will have to believe him you don't have any choice but now with you know what i do you have need to believe him no uh, every customer really wants to know where the cab is so having a clear understanding of your customer makes a organization a digitally transformed organization this is a quote from uh, father of your team leadership is not racing ahead of others leadership is caring ahead of others so which means that caring for your customer drives an organization towards digital leadership so uh, are you okay for a thriller story this is again it is not a story outside the context okay it is going to be very relevant to data yes there there was a president of the us uh, his name is james garfield uh, he is not like your current president who will make you laugh okay uh, he is a very serious guy uh, he was uh, uh, you know the major general uh, and he kind of you know quelled uh, the american civil rights related uh, conflicts okay? so he made he was made the president um there was a system i know that this thing so you, know, you will uh, you know agree that this happens in politics even today right if there is a ruling party and there is some uh, some guys who are very closely associated with the ruling party when police recruitment comes or uh, you know public service commission comes at the state level you will have somebody who is favoring the ruling party easily gaining access so this happened in the us as well people who were favoring uh, the party with which the uh, president was associated with people who did the campaigning this case got uh, a good number of government jobs there was one guy um, who did not get a job and he was feeling very offended that this kind of a practice is existing he shot the president he shot james garfield and uh, you know the technology was not so great there uh, even in the us then uh, like you know mri scans and all those things were not because we are talking about some period in 1800s so then what happened is uh, it was difficult to locate where the bullet is that was a uh, problem uh, right if you had no you know devices to scan and identify locating the bullet uh, you know in the abdomen area or whatever was difficult you cannot you know just like that cut anywhere and do anything to the uh, you know uh, anybody like that so uh, one of the best scientists who lived in that era was called to help with identifying where the bullet is and that scientist is none other than alexander graham bell so graham bell came with his one of his earliest inventions of uh, you know uh, you know uh, telephones and a slightly modified version of it he tried keeping the you know one of the sensors and listened uh, you know uh, if there is a metal there then it will give a sound so anywhere in the president uh, president's body when the metal was kept it was giving some kind of a faint sound um in some places it was giving a little faint in some places it was giving a slightly you know audible kind of a sound so uh, graham bell could not find where uh, you know the bullet is um so he returned unsuccessful okay uh, there were many others who tried they were also unsuccessful uh, the president's health worsened and then 
Graham Bell tested it on some other devices. It kind of worked semi-successfully uh, and all that, but he could not find the answer. Then he went back and after a couple of months, he just had a suspect. And by the time he could confirm his uh, suspect on why he could not find the bullet, the president had expired. Okay. So the what happened uh, behind this is this. The bed on which the president was lying, it had wire mesh inside it. Okay, it had a metallic wire mesh inside it. So when he kept the device here, it had a faint beep. When he kept the device here, it was giving another faint beep. So it did not work. Similarly, when you do your data collection for big data, principal component analysis, or for machine learning, we will have to detect any underlying data patterns in it. Only then, uh, whatever model that you are going to create will be useful. It will give reliable results when you get into the confusion matrix and look at the true positive. So look at your data, look at the underlying data. This is, uh, you know, the essence that I wanted to deliver through this impactful story. Moving on. Um, there are uh, six indispensable skills, uh, I would call them, okay? Uh, these are important for industry 4.0. The first thing is assessing your uh, solutions. Uh, there can be many vendors who provide, um, you know, services like, you know, RPA or, uh, you know, some who provide, uh, you know, a machine learning pipeline. So people would say that, you know, they, their products can do uh, wonders. It takes very, very lesser time. They have deployed in uh, ABC company. Uh, we have deployed in XYZ company. So it is working great. So please, uh, you know, it will also work for you. They can say anything. But remember, uh, you will have to examine whether what they say is comparable or not. They would have automated some form which is having a very, very structured template. And your organization forms with a very structured template, maybe only 5% of the whole forms. So their solution may not work. Um, you know, I know that there was a chat bot in one of the hospitals um, where it was being used for two things. One for reception inquiries, another for nephrology department. There was another you know, hospital in Chennai which wanted to buy that chat bot and you know, they were impressed. So all it required was there was a knowledge base and we used NLP closest to matching keywords and then it was able to generate responses. They wanted to uh, use it for uh, physiotherapy and yet another uh, you know, speciality. It did not work because unlike nephrology, which has got some limited levels of branching out in their decision tree, physiotherapy is not like that. So it did not work. So before uh, you know, we invest in any solution, assessing the solutions is an indispensable skill for every leader. Because why I'm saying this is, it is very, very costly to switch over. Once you create a bot in automation anywhere and uh, suddenly your organization wants to go for, you know, okay, we will uh, automation anywhere is costly. Let us go with the UI path. Then you cannot troubleshoot the bo uh, bot in UI path. It is not possible. IoT platform, like, you know, uh, what is developed in Particle, if you want to move to IBM Watson IoT, it is, it's not possible. It requires a huge investment if you are to change an IoT platform. Uh, so uh, be very cautious uh, on this. And uh, here is something. Uh, one solution sometimes may not be very great. Okay. So can you use multiple solutions to result the, to come out with the same solution? Um, there was an old Tamil movie comedy in which uh, you know one person comes and asks the comedian who is sitting in a store, uh, what is the time? The comedian takes the, you know one watch in his left hand, another watch in his right hand. He looks at the left watch and says six. Uh, looks at this uh, right side watch and says forty two. This guy says, why are you looking at two watches and telling me the time? Then this guy says, no, one watch uh, the longer needle is missing. In another one, the short arm is missing. So there could be some weakness in one solution, but can you compensate with another solution? For example, uh, there are many optical character recognition readers. Some optical character recognition readers may be very good in 
uh, you know alpha characters some may be very good in reading uh, you know uh, numerics some may be very good in reading handwriting some may be very good in re reading uh, data which is inside a tabular column so having known it when there is a table do you want to use uh, you know uh, the third osia when there is alpha character do you want to use the first osia and can you create some kind of a voting algorithm so that the best of the output comes because the weakness of one is compensated by another uh, you know so that is a decision so all this is a skill uh, related to assessing solutions for leaders when they work with digital transformation this applies anywhere so this is very important i am telling you from my learnings from digital transformation this is very very important learning and sometimes even organizations go wrong with overvalued acquisitions they think that oh this company can drive wonderful automation because they have this tool they think it's a golden duck and they acquire the duck and uh, you know try to cut it but the overvalued acquisition uh, has cost certain companies financials very heavily they thought that this company has got a huge potential in you know automation or solutions uh, but it did not work in the favor so assessing solutions is a key skill for the leaders uh number 2 is measuring what matters uh, okay in an automated system when uh, when some you know uh, people staff are using a system then their metrics may be measured in some manner but if an automated system is to do that then the same metrics may not be holding good for example um uh, for example uh, number of fields that an operator uh, keys in a form this can be a measure of an operator's productivity okay uh, but when a machine does it can we keep the number of fields uh, you know uh, that is generated or uh, you know uh, automatically extracted by the ocr as a measure of productivity may not be okay maybe one ocr is extracting three fields but if you put together all the characters which are there in each of the fields maybe one field has got gender only m is written there so you have got one character if you put together all the three fields it comes only to about eight characters then that is not a measure of automation effectiveness you may have to look at how many fields are there you know how many characters are there if somebody is to key it from their keyboard for typing four characters somebody may have to use maybe five keys right so um, identifying and measuring what matters is where the intelligence lies and that is where we require the leaders to foresee some new metrics and ask the vendor can you create this metrics for me or can i develop this in house right so all these things are uh, you know important measuring what matters okay so this is something so you i would say before you go with the, any of the you know uh, people who provide a solution follow the tailor's rule the tailor's rule okay uh, people who are from the accountancy economic background please don't think it's john taylor the economist i am talking about the local taylor what does the local taylor do as a rule he measures twice cuts once so think twice measure well and then go ahead with any solution and any way of representing the metric and uh, the third thing um, i will move it little faster we have because we have got more to cover um the third thing is uh, um continued applicability on common ground uh, because what you create today for a purpose that you create uh, you know your algorithms or automated systems today may have a change when there is a variation in the input uh, okay so the model may not work uh, the same way when the input changes so uh, did your training data set uh, for Uh, determining the model did it have uh, you know the adequate representation and variations and when it when such a change happens do you want to uh, tweak the existing model or do you want to build a new model so that is a decision which leaders will have to take and make or build a decision there are things which are available in the market there are things which you know you can develop yourself so is that do you want to do it yourself or not can i wait till i develop a product it, which can take one and a half years later or can i use a product which is available today in the market uh, right now and develop it in parallel so these things are key decisions which can 
decide how fast your organization is able to make a change in the digital transformation. Fifth point is, um, you know, uh, big successes doesn't matter. Um, uh, you know, if you're aware of agile, uh, you know, you'd also be knowing that there is something called minimum viable product. Do you uh, know, are you able to create something which can be passed on as a full function? So create, you know, learn from these products, learn, you know, through different inputs, faster and faster, fail faster, rather than trying to make very, very big success. If you think at, uh, you know, think about uh, Maruti 800, the first Maruti 800, which came in, you know, 1980s. Today, if you look at it, you may not like it at all, right? It will be, you know, what is this cramped thing? What is this dashboard? So you may not like it at all. But imagine that point of time, it was the best. At that point of time, it worked. That is all. No, they worked on something. They kept rolling, right? And then they improved. So organizations and as leaders, you know, who are driving it, we should be, you know, willing to, you know, fail fast, learn from it, rather than taking very, very big successes and doing something great. Okay. And stronger domain knowledge, as I already said, um, data scientists cannot do anything without a strong domain knowledge. You have the domain knowledge. So when you learn something more complementing, uh, you will be able to make a big difference because domain knowledge matters. People will have to understand the context, right? So if, uh, if a railway guard is to be, you know, is, uh, you know, is saying the mail has come, it has got a meaning, right? If somebody in a courier company is saying mail has come, it has got a different meaning. A corporate office of somebody says mail has come, it has got a different contextual meaning, isn't it? So the, the contextual domain understanding uh, is very important because only when you understand the domain, only when you understand the customer, you will be able to develop the product very well. So this is a very indispensable skill for Industry 4.0, which I'm sure each one of you have for succeeding in this. And I would also say, you know, like tools which require a minor upgrade, right? Even in your mobile phone, many applications upgrade um, every uh, week. You know, it asks you, can I automatically upgrade and all that. So here also for us, uh, we require an update from an old tool to some new tools. What you see on the left side is, uh, you know, Six Sigma approach, where you will find what is a the problem. Then you will do a data collection based on sampling, and then you will analyze the data uh, right. Then you uh, do a process walkthrough. So all these things, you know, it takes a lot of time. By the time you come into the analyze phase, uh, you know, uh, by gathering, getting sign off and all, all these things, it could take about two to three months also. There are, there are tools, process mining tools like Disco. All you have to do is just take your data dump and feed it inside. It will identify what is the process. It will say, uh, you know, which process there is a looping. How fast, you know, things, you know, uh, your transactions are moving from one process to another. Here you see a scale kind of a thing, right? If you modify the scale, it will show a detailed depiction of the process. You will be directly able to identify where exactly the problem is by looking at uh, just a data dump in discovery tool within a few minutes. So the old tools are out. So new tools are in. So it requires a minor upgrade for us to know the new tools. See, we were not unhappy in knowing Google Pay. We were not unhappy in purchasing a, uh, a screen phone. So we can happily learn these tools, which are going to be very, very interesting tools. I would recommend, you know, just since you are introduced to Disco, um, get into YouTube and watch any video on Disco tool. So you will love it. It will give you a lot of insight when you just watch one or two videos on Disco. Okay. And even for organizations, the thinking has to change. Uh, the working capital returns and all these things are not terms which will be only used by inventors. These will also be required to be used by people who are leading the digital transformation initiatives in each team. So old tools and old thinking are out and the new ones are already in. So let us look at, you know, adapting to the new ones today. We talked about culture. Um, there is something which happened in uh, this zoo, people who are in Chennai and people who are in TN especially would uh, anyway know this zoo, uh, Wanderloor Zoo. Uh, all animals, uh, uh, you know, wild animals are quarantined there. They cannot go out. If they go out, they are dangerous to people. Uh, people are dangerous to them. 
we are also like that only for the last two months. We are also quarantined. We cannot go out. So there was, uh, you know, uh, uh, three years ago, there was a person who was in charge of the zoo. Uh, and uh, that officer was from Bangalore. He was a very, very straightforward officer. And he wanted to, you know, implement, um, you know, a credit card uh, machine uh, with sensors for issuing the tickets in uh, the zoo. Okay. Um, and uh, a company called Future Techniques, which uh, happens to be in Mugapet, uh, in Chennai. Uh, so that supplied the equipment to Wonderwood Zoo. Uh, two days later, they got a call saying that, uh, no, no, the card slot is not working. No, display is not functioning properly. Uh, you know, if you feed money there, it does not, uh, you know, it is getting stuck. Uh, so these complaints came. Uh, okay. And uh, when the founder of this company himself visited, because it was a very important government contract, when the founder of this company you know, himself visited, then what he found was the staff had meddled with the mission. They had inserted something like hairpin inside and they have uh, you know, done something to the spring. Uh, okay, reason is just one, cultural adoption. The staff there did not want such a mission which gives transparency into the ticket sold. They wanted to give the tickets and then, you know, they will just tear the ticket. When the person returns, he will give the same torn ticket to somebody else who is entering. So they will pocket the money. So that is, uh, you know, uh, that, that kind of a mindset was there. As a result, this transformation never worked. Uh, it never worked. This mission is, uh, you know, you, you know the, that kind of thing, uh, culture is very, very important for digital transformation. So this one I'll sp speed up. Uh, because there are quite a few slides and uh, I know that it is nearing 7.30. Uh, this one I'll speed up. So uh, any process for that matter, even if it's a manual process, it requires planning, right? It requires planning. Even if you're taking cooking as a manual process, it requires some planning. Somebody will have to uh, you know, plan for it, coordinate, and there is governance in adjusting the burner of the stove. So like this, automation also requires planning. So there is uh, a center of excellence function which governs the whole planning for all automation initiatives within an organization. So um, that way, uh, you as you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the academicians especially, you as people who have got uh, you know a great influence over people and uh, you know manage different projects within your uh, you know uh, college, you will be able to you know fit in a role in a uh, center of excellence function for automation. So that requires leaders who can liaison, leaders who can train and coach. You are extraordinarily good in training and coaching students, yes. So you will be able to you know, uh, easily graduate to a uh, COE function for automation or you know, any other thing for that matter. So I'm skipping other you know, um, important stuff. And this is another thing on the data. And uh, I'm, you know, even though there are you no know, technical slides to be covered, I'm stopping here uh, because because of one reason. When there is a story and a connect, uh, the retention will be longer. So it's a very small story about uh, World War II. There were flights, uh, you know, uh, which were you know going from the U.S. Uh, to Germany. Warplanes, uh, you know, not every warplane returned safely. There were a lot of warplanes. Uh, you know, which were, uh, you know, which never returned. Some of them returned, okay. So, um, you know, the uh, U.S. Army wanted to engage, uh, uh, you know, people who could make the life of the warplane better so that pilots are saved, uh, right, and their investment in a warplane is not ordinary, uh, right. So, this, these of warplanes where the bullet shots were received from the ground okay so germany would not allow in you know uh, something you know a flight from the us goes ordinarily right so these were you know where bullet shots were received so they were they, it doesn't mean in one flight everything was received i'm saying from a defect concentration or kind of a thing this is where it happened so people were called in to analyze the problem and what should be done so some of the statisticians there uh, you know almost everybody in the team said See, this is where most of the damages are happening. Our flights are getting shot in this area, on the wing, on this area, on the tail. So let us have some 
much more stronger metallic guard in these areas so that the flights uh, you know doesn't get damaged one statistician abraham wald differed from everybody else he said no this approach is wrong you cannot if you have a god here that is useless he said you are looking only at the flights that returned okay what happened to the flights which never returned it is possible that the flights that never returned were targeted in this area yes because the flights if it has returned it has returned safely despite being shot here it means that those places are already safe you should look at the ones which did not return so he said that this is where you have to guard uh, right increase the metallic uh, you know coverage and you know guard it so again this is a main concept for data scientists because see a lot of junior data scientists join many many organizations not everybody is sharp enough in you know uh, using the data so it is not just the data which matters how you look at data matters a lot okay so these are some ways of prioritizing automation i just tell you one formula that's all um, you know the savings that can be generated into how successful the project is divided by how long the project will take into the cost or investment that the organization will have to make so this is one way of prioritizing uh, the different improvement initiatives within an organization okay this is a very simplest method of prioritizing it without uh, you know and it will apply everywhere so in the interest of time i'm skipping you know the other details here and moving on so this also i'm skipping and uh, moving on um and this is on automation reality okay i would like to check with uh, professor mahesh uh, would we need to um, you know how long can i take as a grace time professor uh, mahesh no actually uh, uh, we can ask the uh, participants uh, one or two participants uh, can express their uh, expression they can ex express their uh, concern regarding this please okay thank you Shall we move to questions? Okay, maybe uh, uh, Professor Mahesh, you can just check the chat. Because yes. If I check the chat, uh, carry on, sir. Like yes, me. you carry on for another ten minutes, and after that, we'll go for the questionnaire session. Thank you. Okay, okay, yeah. In my over enthusiasm, I have prepared ninety-three slides. I am on slide forty-four. <laughs> okay, so. Yes, so we'll just take a quick look and see which ones could be important. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so I'll I will also skip. You know what? Uh, you know. Can I ask uh, you? Sorry. Can I ask a question? Ah yes, sir. Please, uh, can we can we reserve it? I think uh, I've got okay, five fine. more minutes to wind up the okay, session. Fine, 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 sir. Fine, sir. I'll be asking at the end. Okay, fine. Ah, sure, sure. That will be most welcome. Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you. So, yeah, this these are certain you know perceptions and pain points. Um, I would say a digital workforce is very much like um, you know and any other staff workforce. Don't look at it differently. A digital workforce also has got a learning curve, an algorithm. is as good as the number of training data sets you feed into it right they have learning limitation just like somebody cannot keep everything in their memory they have learning limitations so there are gradient boost uh, techniques which are deployed on them like people they also require monitoring not all automation bots will work perfectly once deployed uh, right like somebody if he goes on leave what will happen you require fall black planning right so this applies for any automation initiatives also if one sensor fails if one actuator fails what do we do right so i'm skipping this uh so this is uh yeah i don't know if i can dedicate uh, adequate time on it what you see here on the screen is called confusion matrix so which is uh when you build something for predicting or classifying um how correct that prediction is so that depends whether you can go ahead and use the data for taking all decisions in your organization so the uh, you know the most desirable ones are true positive and true negative 
what does true positive mean let us say if uh, you know data is collected to identify whether somebody has got covid or not uh, right and uh, body temperature travel uh, related information if some data like this is gathered and uh, you know it has been gathered across india and then they have identified if this is the case then somebody has got covid positive this is the case somebody has got covid negative right and you if the when the model is working somebody has got covid and uh, you know which is a positive case and the model says yes he has got covid correctly it is predicting correctly then it is called true positive somebody uh, you know uh, does not have covid and the model predicts correctly which is true the model's prediction is true then it is called true negative somebody does not have covid and it is uh, you know uh, falsely saying that it is uh, uh, you know uh, its prediction is false then this is a problem so false positive somebody uh, you know it is saying that you know somebody does not have covid it says you have got covid prediction is false whereas the reality is positive so this is called false positive these are this is called confusion matrix this is very very important followed by almost everybody almost every organization when they are using any predictive models okay so uh, there are there are going to be lot of changes in the roles in the coming days um, uh, like uh, trainer will not be just training uh, operators trainers will have to uh, train virtual reality systems uh, quality analysts they will not be you know just uh, you know helping the operators to correct errors they will have to identify what errors automation systems are making and they will have to you know advance it to the next level of deep learning this is a photograph of a temple which i took uh, a few days ago in kk nagar the temple is called multi vinayaka temple you don't need to go to siddhi vinayaka buddhi vinayaka sakti vinayaka for all these three things there is somebody called multi vinayaka so multi skills for anybody is required in this uh, age so and people who are in some professions how do you graduate to a different profession is something which i have written as a linkedin article you can go through this and uh, i would also like to say that father of your team is a book which aids in career transformation there are several methods that uh, you know the manager in the organization tells how somebody can succeed when they do a transition in their career so i would recommend that uh, you know you take a look at father of your team as a ebook now which is available at 99 rupees um yeah there is something on digital maturity as assessment i'm skipping this and a um, lot others there are means in which uh, uh, tools can show how much you have saved in the organization these are a couple of uh, indicators of such tools and when you accelerate your research you can be cautious about data visualization and data pre processing because that is where people generally go wrong and take a lot of time and there are ways to accelerate it so i'm skipping this there are case studies and um, i would like to say that uh, organizations are in a race even individuals are in a race uh, to outbeat each other right in a car race um the curve is where most cars can beat the competition so currently the industry is going through such an inflection curve before that you may have to slightly slow down and then go fast in the curve so currently that applies for the organizations and it applies for your careers as well i would like to wind up saying that uh, uh, please uh, you know it is important for us to transform ourselves before we transform the world around so which means that our ability to see signals of change how do we negotiate on change how can we influence priorities how can we handle conflicts without straining relationship with somebody and talking with the data these are certain skills which will uh, help and many things uh, many of these skills are addressed through stories in father of your team which is us number 1 ranked new release in office management okay and this is our next session uh, which will be hosted by majestic technologies on public speaking after your qna please uh, feel free to um, drop your feedback in author venkat now we are open for question and answers thank you so much for your time
I value your investment on a Sunday for having listened through the entire session. Thank you so very much. Hi, sir. I am Shahid here. Someone was interested in asking yes, a question. Shahid. Shahid. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was trying to ask a question. See, sir, the biggest thing a human... Shahid. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is that most of us, most of us in, this, us in the sense that see, we have a fear the kind of fear we have while changing to a technology is that, see, what is the cost? Whether we have a proactive kind of strategy or does it work for a longer period of time? That's the real question, right? Okay. So your question is, um, you know, uh, I invest in studying a technology. Will it work for a longer period of time? Yeah, is that, that's a question. That because it is changing so rapidly. Okay. 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 So, uh, see, the, this change that we are seeing, right, this is changing after many, many years. So, there will be stability. Nobody will change transformation framework just in two months. Nobody will change, uh, you know, uh, a platform or an actuator, uh, you know, just like that. So, this change will stabilize. Uh, this change will stabilize. And, uh, you know, once somebody, you know, if there is an organization which is specializing in machine learning alone, then they will probably learn something a little bit more better about, you know, uh, algorithms or they will do a performance tuning on it, which will come as part of your role itself. So you need not be bothered about the changes that happen. Once you, uh, you know, once you get into the role, right, you can run and catch the bus. Once you get into the bus, you need not bother about running. You'll, you'll keep moving. So uh, the change is something which is happening now. Once you get into it, it is going to be seamless. You need not worry about, you know, will I be able to, uh, you know, uh, be able to uh, adapt to the change completely. Once I get into it, need not have any botherations, uh, Shahid. Uh, it, it, it is absolutely baseless because once you get into it, you learn the nuances. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very, very solidly sure about it because I have learned data science and I've experimented it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Author Venkat, uh, just uh, check the chat box. Somebody has asked questions to you, please. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Excuse me, sir. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Your name, please. Yes, I'm Bhune sir. Sir, tell some open source tools for data visualization, sir. Uh, uh, come again, ma'am. Uh, what is your question on data visualization? Uh, some open source data visualiz visualization tools are available. Uh, yes, yes, yes. See, Jupyter Notebook itself is a programming language ag agnostic platform which is used for data visualization. So you can go with Jupyter Notebook. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going through the chat box. Uh, Professor Mahesh, will it be possible for you to take a photograph of the participants or do we do it at the end of the session? Or screenshot. You're speaking on mute. Uh, uh, Magesh, you're speaking on mute. Uh, actually, it is recorded. I will send it to you. Uh, okay, okay. I, I thought we can take a window pane of a screenshot. If you have already taken it, that's wonderful. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going through the other questions. Um, Proper option will get reduced and no complete. Whatever you said was nothing different. Only thing that happened was unsuccessful. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. Only thing that happened was all things was unsuccessful individually. Only change happened was to bring too many features in single application was suspected. I didn't understand this question all that clear. Um, okay. Um, I see more compliments coming ahead. Okay, somebody has asked what is the previous slide. I didn't know. I didn't notice the chat at that point of time. Ten mantra slide, is it? Can you? Yeah. So I will. I will. Yeah. I will. Uh, no, my email ID is here. 
uh, reach at authorvenkat.com or you can get it from you know majestic technologies i will be happy to share any specific slides that is of interest for you okay sir being an mba student how could this data science can help me in my career uh, as i have seen a lot of financial terminology now getting connected with python and r language hitesh kapil being an mba student how would this data science help me in my career hitesh uh, what is your mainstream in mba is so, it hr yes sir yes sir so my basically right now pursuing uh, you know mba in finance and marketing so basically sir my core interest in finance and uh, i have seen as a lot of you know mooc courses which are being you know connected with you know the python and uh, you know r languages you know some the some of the names actually you know uh, goes by like python with the financial modeling something like that so that's why sir you know i have a you know by musion regarding this so i thought that i would like to you know ask you okay uh, well see i would not be able to recall the packages because you are specializing in the domain you know the packages i'll be able yes. to say the names of packages in uh, nlp some which is used for modeling like car so like that so i will not be able to comment at a package level but if you are asking for finance yes the scope is very much there because uh, you know artificial intelligence for auditing purposes you know the audit compliance is right hitesh uh, yes. this is not does not require auditors any longer so fraud detection or uh, you know kyc you know these things can be you know uh, your uh, you know data itself will talk about it and the machine will flag alerts so that way i would see applicability of our finance had you been an mba hr guy i would have said that there are lot of companies which are into hr analytics uh, okay right. so every screen for that matter right okay, every screen for that matter you have application data science all all i would suggest is if you are you know if you belong to any stream just type the name of your stream and okay. startups in india that's all if you are an agri just write top agri startups in india okay top healthcare startups in india top virtual reality startups in india look at what this uh, absolutely yeah swetlana you're right uh, blockchain is futuristic concept for finance industry not just finance it is uh, you know for legal or anything because asset proofing uh, all those things are there yes correct 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 thank you thank you sir, sir. thank you sir. thank you sir. thank you very much sir. yes uh, i'm just going through if there are some more questions in the chat box okay uh okay uh, there is somebody who has asked something on chemistry uh what is yes, augmented reality i am a chemistry uh trainer of plus 2 level okay okay um i can't talk about chemistry on augmented reality but i can tell you what augmented reality is uh see augmented reality is superimposing uh you know something on a physical object or something which is already existing for example uh you know i i got admitted in a hospital some years ago uh there was very difficult uh, for the nurses to detect my vein okay you know for you know all the intravenous injections is required there is a company uh, called aquivin what it will do is you will have to wear glasses once you look at the palm it will be able to superimpose an image of where the vein is so it's very easy you do not prick at different places right so superimposing something on a real a real thing which is existing is augmented reality completely you know uh, you know surreal immersive experiences virtual reality so in chemistry i i'm not able to readily draw a relationship but you know you can look at as i said you can look at you know uh, from a chemistry perspective how can it be helpful or do a search yourself because i'm not a domain expert Thank in everything uh, can i take that answer sir question uh, yes yeah so yes. we have something called as webmed uh, if if you are aware of it um, to the person who has asked the question so in chemistry you can actually build models of the uh, uh, com uh, compound itself or the uh, uh, the chemical compound organic compound whatever we want to and then see how uh, those things are binding so those kind of virtual reality can be created to see how it will go and bind to a human uh, in case you are uh, working on a pharma uh, drug creation or something you can actually uh, simulate the drug and see how this uh, interaction happens between different compounds 
So that can be classified as a virtual reality where you can create it. So WebMed is something which is an age old tool. Uh, when I was studying, we used to uh, have WebMed uh, to create these compound uh, structures and see how they can be stimulated. I don't know uh, if uh, there, there is something else right now, but then yes, WebMed is still there. You can have a look at it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Swaklara. I, I'm, I'm very happy. That's why I called myself learning partner because it is a great learning from you. Thank you. So uh, here is, you know, after the program, TV program, you will have an advertisement, right? So here is an advertisement. Um, the next session, which is going to be conducted by Bagastic Technologies sometime in July, is um, going to be on public speaking. Uh, it is going to be an experiential learning session. I will not be sitting in the chair and doing the session. It is going to be an experiential learning drawn over three weeks uh, because uh, I'm called in as chief guest in some of the colleges for events and all that. There are people who do wonderful presentations, but somehow they're missing the techniques of engaging people uh, because you know, students, it's very hard to draw their attention. So being a great public speaker, mastering the arts of it will help in getting a standing ovation from your audience and getting a great respect when you go for research presentations to other colleges and all that. So Majestic is looking at this need and uh, uh, this target audience for this. So down the line, you may get a communication from Majestic Technologies on this program and you will have a bonus, which is 400 power expressions guide. You use any of your ordinary words, substitute this, any of these 400 words in your conversation during your lecture, you will be looked as a star. It will elevate your lecture like anything. So that is going to be a bonus for people who attend the session. You can watch out for more information later. Thank you, Professor Magesh. Now it's uh, back to you. I can read your mind voice, but uh, you're on mute, Mr. <laughs> Professor Magesh. Thank you, Venkat. And uh, well, on behalf of uh, Majestic Technology Solutions Private Limited, I thank uh, author Venkat Kumarayasan and all the international webinar participate, uh, participants. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, can I have a question, uh, Venkat? Can be taken offline uh, unless okay. it's a very, very quick question. Uh, yeah, it's a quick question. I, I was just wanted to check on, uh, yes, you have said that, yes, uh, this is the upcoming session, but then I was also thinking, um, do you have any calendar uh, uh, that can be published where we can actually enroll ourselves for a specific Sure, training. sure, sure. Um, uh, you know, um, from Majestic Technologies, we have noted down the registered IDs, email IDs of the participants. So the communication will be sent once the session schedule is finalized. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, it was good that I turned off the video so that uh, you didn't see the window behind me. You were able to see the door ahead of you. Thank you for... <laughs> <laughs> creating this opportunity, by, uh, Magesh. And thank I thank every professor here for making out time. I know Sunday is very valuable. If somebody is conducting a webinar like this, I may not have attended a webinar like this, but you made time to attend. So I'm very, very thankful for you. 77, 78 participants in the webinar today is not easy. I have seen larger forums conducting webinars just with 15 participants. So it is really great. I appreciate your interest and I like to cater to it more please do get in touch with uh, Majestic or with me on my email so that um, you know anything that you would require further can be captured too. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend.